let me talk about paid advertising a little bit. Maybe Amazon ads, Google ads, Facebook ads. Um, what part do they play in book promotion? So in book promotion, if you're not paying to play, uh, you're probably not going to be found. Hmm. Um, and so you're going to pay for promotion one way or the other. Mm -hmm. So all these different things we've been talking about, like building your newsletter, you know, using a book bub, all these different promotion avenues. One of the things you have to look at uh, is where is where is my market at? Hmm. So Facebook is still the largest market out there. One of the you know, there's a lot of people right now. There's been a lot of backlash about Facebook. There's been a lot of people who are like, well, I'm just not going to give up my data anymore. I'm not going to do this, that or the other. Hmm. One of the important things to know and be aware of, and this is one of those things that frequently gets me in trouble because I may speak in one room on privacy and security and your online presence and being intentional and cognizant of what you're doing and make a whole room full of people paranoid about how social media works, what's happening in that environment. Mm -hmm. And then I'll walk across the hall and go give a talk about how you use social media to market and advertise and all the data. Mm. And if you then catch me in the bar afterwards, somebody's like, how, how is that a congruent, congruent statement? Mm -hmm. Well, it absolutely is, because in both of those talks, I'm going to say the same thing. Be intentional about who you are and what you do on social media. Be aware of what you're doing, because at the end of the day, there is no such thing as free. So for everybody that uh, that will go on to, I'm, I'm going to keep picking on Facebook because, well, they're the they're the 800 pound gorilla mm -hmm. today. Um, if you're going on to Facebook and you're going on to their platform, and then you go and post, I don't allow Facebook to do blah 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 blah. I'm going to point and laugh at you because that means nothing. You've agreed to the terms and conditions of using their platform. Mm -hmm. Facebook is an expensive company to run. You have a lot of people working for it. You have a lot of hardware. You have a lot of bandwidth being used. Mm -hmm. None of that is free. Mm -hmm. That company has got to make the money somewhere to allow you to play on the platform. They make that money in, well, they make a lot of that money from advertising. That's not their only source. Mm -hmm. They make that money from advertising because they can identify and target you as an individual and ratchet down almost to you as the person to know what you're going to buy or at least be willing to look at. Mm -hmm. And they can do that by your behavior. Now, if you're intentional about your behavior, your behavior online as an individual can help shape the experience as to what you're going to see and experience. Mm -hmm. So, for example, I don't know. I've got 3,000 people or something like that on Facebook currently. I, I had went through and did a culling. And, you know, out of that 3,000 people... I'm only still going to see 50 mm -hmm. unless it's somebody I'm looking for actively. And I actively go through and rotate and look for different friends or to see what's going on, depending on the time of year and different events. Marketing works the same way. If I'm going to run a Facebook ad, I've got to know who is going to be interested in me and my work. Because what it boils down to is the better I can ratchet that down and, and identify my, my reader avatar and I decide what I'm planning to do with that advertising means that I can start having an effective ad spend. Hmm. If I'm just going out there and sticking the cover of my book and a tagline and I'm going to stick 10 bucks a day on it, it's a crapshoot. Hmm. But... If I go out there because and the more I ratchet ratchet it down and I look at people who belong to urban fantasy reader groups, people who are fans of Jim Butcher, people who are fans of John Hartness, you know, if I ratchet down to people that are fans of the TV show Supernatural, I can target them down for, you know, for my urban fantasy series very tightly. Because that way, A, I'm not running ads to people that don't care about it or that even worse will flag it as spam and tag it with, you know, tag it about how much, it's, you know, they don't want to ever see my ads again. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do that because, again, that means I'm spending money for these people to come back in and yell at me. But number two, then I'm reaching the people that I that may be interested in what I do. Effective and ethical marketing is about informing and educating the people that might be interested in what you do mm -hmm. about you and what you're doing. Mm -hmm. 
if it is all shouting at the wilderness, you can spend a lot of money and not move a lot of books. Okay, okay. Um, concerning ads, um, what form do the ads take? Are they simply a still picture? Are they a little snippet of video uh, or just text? What? Uh, or is there a whole variety of possible ads? Uh, there's a there's a wide variety of ads, and one of the things I'm going to say is being aware of your options. Mm -hmm. So, for example, uh, I've done both book trailers that are up to two minutes. I've done short form video that of a few seconds. I've done a lot of different still images, and they aren't necessarily the book cover. If I am looking to target a, a specific niche market and a specific reader that might be interested, mm -hmm. the image that will grab them may be different from somebody else who will equally enjoy the book, but for different reasons. Mm -hmm. I tend to write a lot of dark comedy because it, it, I enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. You know, I, the best selling book I have out there is called Nobody, Nobody's Business. Um, it's a, it's a novella, uh, it's a murder mystery where somebody's killing gnomes and turning them into garden statues. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I can, if I utter that phrase at, at a convention, I can be sitting on a panel and those books will fly. I'm working on the next one in that series. I've actually, that's actually a spinoff of a larger series called the Longbow Initiative, which is a spinoff of another series. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm actually writing a, a tr novella, a trilogy of novellas around the gnomes. Mm -hmm. Because everybody either loves or hates them, mm. and they think it's funny. Mm -hmm. Well, I wrote it because it was a joke. Well, the imagery that works and the phrasing that works for that particular book, and it's been out there for a number of years. I haven't run an ad on it recently. But the imagery that works for that, you know, to see a little gnome like that, I may show the image of the gnome and the cat in the background off the cover. I may just show a garden gnome that's standing there being snarky. I've shown video that looks like, you know, a field of, of frozen gnome. Mm. Different things like that, you there's you have to look and see what's working at a given time because what works today isn't gonna work in three months. Mm -hmm. You know, some things will be work will work for years to come and a lot of the things, but I mean if you find something that's small and it's got good pitch to it. It's not going to work for very long, but it'll be fun for a period of time and get the attention you want. Okay. Well, you're familiar, of course, with BookBub. Have you ever used that service? I have for clients. I have not ever had any of mine picked up for a BookBub. Mm -hmm. um, got a couple of things in the work, but we've done that with clients. BookBubs tend to be very good, tend to be very effective. Um, you know, even if it breaks even, mm -hmm. Getting it in front of a BookBub audience is one of those things that is getting a very large reach and a very large targeted audience. Mm -hmm. So it's one of those things of, and you have to look at the metrics. Are you worried about the immediate sale today or are you worried about making and building audience? Mm -hmm. If it's the first time you've gotten a BookBub, your main concern really ought to be looking at what can you do to build audience? You know, if you've got a good backlist of books that you're working with, Book bubs are very good, very effective, and they can be profitable. If you've only got one or two books, you're probably not going to get a book bub anyway, more than likely, because they're much harder to get now than they used to be. Mm -hmm. But if you can get a book bub promotion and you can get, especially if you can get the international, then it becomes easier to get the domestic U.S. You know, book bub list um, and a listing there. But it's one of those things uh, like anything else. BookBub doesn't necessarily want you want you to spend money on them that's not going to come back through as a return on sales. Mm -hmm. They are looking to promote people that are going to be online because if they start promoting things that don't sell or don't move or don't reflect properly what they're doing, then it impacts their brand overall. Mm -hmm. So BookBub is, is becoming much more protective of their image and their brand, which means it's a little bit harder to get, get the BookBub promotion. But if you can get one, they are quite. They can be quite effective. Mm -hmm. I would say they're not that. Depending on what genre it is, it, there's a little bit of mixed effectiveness there. But again, this is one of those things that over time, if you can get a book bub in there once a quarter, or even a couple of times a year with the new books, new promotions, all of that helps you in backlist. Mm -hmm. uh, my understanding is that uh, very often, if pup, if somebody gets a book bub, it's uh, they discount the book for that event. 
either 99 cents or free. Yep. Mm -hmm. okay. They'll typically go out there and do a heavy discount. And again, this is one of those things where you're not necessarily looking for that book to pay off for the book pub. Mm -hmm. You're looking for people to become invested in you as an author. So, for example, going back to Stuart, where he's got 14 books in that series. If he gives away the first two and people become invested in the characters and the story, he's got 12 more that people can go and get and buy. Mm -hmm. That's what you want to get pull, people pulled into is your backlist. Mm -hmm. And again, this is one of those reasons why if you've only got a couple of books, a book bub is probably not really going to be effective for you. Okay. They can help you build an audience. Mm -hmm. But again, what you're really wanting to do is introduce people to you, your, your characters, your story, your style, so that they then become interested in your other work. Mm -hmm.